morning. Oh, hey, Brian. I'm making all your favorite things for your birthday dinner this weekend. Lactose-free lasagna and chocolate-free brownies. Or, as I call them, crappies. <laughs> um, actually, Mom, I, I was gonna go hang out with my friends. Don't you want to spend your birthday with your family? Judy's turning 18. Let him have a wild night out with his buddies. Howl at the moon. So, how are you gonna spend your first night of manhood? At Uncle Phineas's old-timey arcade and ice cream parlor. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. And then after that, we're gonna go check out some close-up action. That's more like it. He's talking about a magic show. <laughs> sleight of hand. And sleight of man. And then, we're gonna cap off my birthday blowout with a late-night show at Magnificent Milton's Marionette Theater. Wow. I did that on my fifth birthday. <laughs> and it was lame then. Come on, Tina, you didn't have to say that. Because we were all thinking it. Ryan, forget that. You and me are going out together for your birthday. Dad, wait a minute, a and, and not go see the marionette show? Dad, the birthday boy gets to sit on stage in the old cobbler's shoe. <laughs> son, son, son. How I wish I had a son. Going on stage in one hour, who's ready to soft rock? Yeah, I'm sorry, Aunt Linda. I can't go to the concert. I have homework. You're trying to blow me off. You don't do homework. <laughs> I actually was going to try to blow you off, but I really do have homework. <laughs> well, um, okay, I can't go to a Clay Aiken concert without a teenage girl. I'll look like a weirdo. Is Brian around? <laughs> yeah, but he's filling out college stuff. Okay, well, what are you working on? Maybe I can help you get it done faster. I have to write this poem for English. I've been working on it all day. Okay, I love poetry. Tell me what you got. I like food. It is good. <laughs> I don't mean to be rude, but you are screwed. <laughs> See, I don't have the gift for it like you do. <laughs> well, no, it's true. In high school, I, uh... Well, I was quite the poetess. <laughs> Crippling depression is a wonderful muse. <laughs> Tell you what, why don't we head back to my apartment? I can give you one of mine to turn in. Of course, you know, it is plagiarism. Yeah, I can't. Because it's supposed to be a poem, not a play. <laughs> don't worry, honey, I got poems too. <laughs> How are the applications going? They're taking forever. First Miller to go to college. And don't take it lightly. Remember who's paying for it. You mean the people who give out scholarships and loans? And whose pathetic salary helps you qualify for those scholarships and loans? Yeah, you know what, you're, uh, you're right, Dad. Your half-assery has really given me a leg up. Son, it's almost the least I could do. But if there's any less, let me know. DePaul, I thought you had a meeting scheduled with the recruiter from Stanford. Well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards DePaul now. You know, it's close by. But you said you liked Stanford's psychics program. Physics. <laughs> well, change your major if you want to, but don't base your decision on which college is closer. Well, if I went to DePaul, I could live at home. But if you lived at Stanford, I could visit the OC. <laughs> no, uh, your mother gave me a free pass on Misha Barton. <laughs> I thought you said LeVar Burton. <laughs> Either way, knock yourself out. <laughs> Sounds to me like you're afraid to leave home. You're turning 18, Brian. It's time to start standing on your own two feet. Which means choosing the best school. We're talking about your future here, of taking care of me and your mother. <laughs> and don't we deserve a better life than the one we gave you? All I'm saying is keep an open mind. And go to that Stanford interview. I'll think about it. worried about that one. It's obvious he's scared to leave home. Face it, Judy, these kids have it too good here. Three meals a day, we've overfed them. <laughs> we've let Brian stay little boy too long with the puppets and the magic and the action figures. When you take him out tomorrow, tell him he needs to be more independent and, and push the Stanford thing. Don't worry, I got it covered. I'm going to teach him everything he needs to know about being a grown-up man. Oh, I spilled. Arms up! Wow, you, you, you 
brought me to a strip club for my 18th birthday. Oh, no, no, this is a gentleman's club, and today you are a gentleman. By the way, check any seat before you sit on it. Fine, you're a grown man now. You're finally old enough to experience what every grown man fantasizes about in their every waking hour. An all-you-can-eat hot wing buffet. <laughs> Son, this place has to be uh, a secret between you and me. Oh, I, I, I get it, because you don't want Mom to know. Oh, she knows. Who do you think brought me here when she didn't want to cook one night? I just don't want this place to get too trendy. It'll lose its mom and pop feel. Hey, I, I, I feel kind of weird about this. Nothing weird going on. We're just a father and son eating wings while all around women take their clothes off for money. Isn't this great? You know, it, it's been my birthday all day, but I didn't really feel 18 until right this minute. Well, this is what your mom and I want for you, to get out in the world and spread your wings, which is why we think you should reconsider Stanford. Yeah, you know, maybe, maybe you're right. I, I should spread my wings a little. Yeah, spread a couple of them over here. Oh, you are going to love being an adult. Not having anyone to answer to, being your own man. Yeah, that, that does sound great. <laughs> and in honor of this special moment, here's a little something from me and your mother. Happy 18th birthday. Thanks, Dad. You didn't have to get me a car insurance bill. You have to pay that from now on. But it's a small price to pay for being your own man. $500? Hi, Q. Oh, no, no, no. He, uh, he owes $500. Well, is there anything I can do for you? You bet. We are out of blue cheese. gave you. I hope it was okay. Actually, it's been kind of a nightmare. Really? Why? What happened? Teacher didn't like it? No. He loved it. In fact, I have to read it at some dumb poetry contest. Uh, the iambic pentathlon? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's it. I just wish Mr. Unger hadn't made such a big deal about it. What, Mr. Unger? I had him. He gave me a C- minus on that poem. Hmm. Gave me an A. <laughs> he gave you an A? And you're going to the pentathlon? Mm -hmm. Well, I never made it to the pentathlon. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute, I know what this is about. You are pretty and popular, and in high school, I was sexually confused and going through a very awkward stage. <laughs> More awkward than this conversation? <laughs> half a mind to tell that Mr. Unger that he is a shallow and hypocritical man. Wait! Well, I just want to read this poem past English and not have to go to summer school, so nobody is going to tell Mr. Unger anything, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Suppose I should just be happy that my poem is being recognized and I have such a popular and pretty niece. <laughs> pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. <laughs> Way to peek early, honey. Enjoy your 30s. I can't believe what just happened. I went to pick up Brian from his tutoring job. Turns out he quit two weeks ago. Well, that explains everything. When I was just screaming at you to get me a beer, you weren't even in the house. I'm uh, sorry about some of the language I used. Hey. Where have you been? Uh, I was tutoring. Don't lie to me. I'm not lying to you. Yes, you are. You quit tutoring. When were you going to tell us? I, I, I didn't realize I had to. You have to when I don't know where you are every day. So where have you been spending your afternoons? You know what? If you don't mind, I'd really rather not get into it. I do mind. You have to tell me right now. Yeah, hold on. Hold on. A few weeks ago, I got a lecture about how I should be more independent and make my own choices. Remember, it was when I got my birthday present, the, uh, the car insurance bill for $500? <laughs> Say something. Did, did you pay that? Because when I gave it to you, it was already past due. Yeah, Dad, I did pay it and the late fee, so I believe we're done here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I know this stamp. It's from that strip club with the wings. <laughs> Since when do you go there? Dad took me there for my 18th birthday. But that was weeks ago, and you're Mr. Wash My Hands Every Day. <laughs> Well, if I had been, it's none of your business. Brian, I am so disappointed in you. 
You spend all afternoon at that strip club and you don't bring any wings home for me? <laughs> what, is the world out of styrofoam containers? Is it? Huh? Answer me, young man! <laughs> Brian, I know you're upset, but your mother's just worried about you. Well, there's nothing to worry about. Listen, uh, gentlemen's clubs may be great for the occasional hot wing buffet or bachelor party, but going every day might be a little much. You know, you need to have a little self-control. Self-control? Dad, when we were at the club, you ate chicken skin off the floor. <laughs> oh, suddenly Mr. Everyday Strip Club guy's judging me for eating a tiny bit of floor skin. Look, Dad, you, you guys want me to be an adult, but then you want to tell me what to do. And you can't have it both ways, so I'm going to be going to the strip club whenever I want. And what am I supposed to tell your mother, huh? Huh? No, really, tell me, because uh, you know, you're, you're smarter than I am. Uh, I'll give you 50 bucks. That'll get you a few dances. <laughs> I'll let go up there. Judy, I'm his father. How do you think it went? Oh, my God, we've lost him forever. <laughs> this is partially my fault. I told him to be his own person, and then I sent him out on his first night of adulthood with a man with a brain the size of a lima bean. Which is the largest of the beans. <laughs> can't just sit here and watch my little bribery -bri throw his life away on some nudie bars. We need a way we can lure him back. What could Brian like more than boobies, Judy? <laughs> so where is Master Brian? The show's about to begin. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, creepier than strippers. Ignore him. Brian is gonna love this. Brian, I have a surprise for you. I'm Judy. <clears throat> <laughs> Mr. Puppet, this is my husband, Bill. Hello. Heidi ho Bill. Mr. McDougal's the name. Quite a grip you've got there, big fella. I bet you work out. Well, I, uh, I, I did play football in high school. <laughs> Ooh, really? Uh, all state, actually. Three, three times. Hmm. Bill, you're lying to a puppet. <laughs> the birthday boy! Wow, the magnificent Milton's! What, what are you guys doing here? Happy birthday, Brian! I figured since you couldn't see the show on your birthday, I'd bring the show to you! <laughs> hey, Mom, this, this is really nice of you, but, but you should have checked with me first. I, I have other plans. What? But this is your birthday present. I know, and I appreciate that, but I am an adult now, and, and I keep my own schedule. Uh, Mr. McDougal, cream puff the bear, good day. You're going to legs, aren't you? <gasps> the strip club? Hey, it's a gentleman's club. Yeah, but still, during the daytime? Creepy. <laughs> okay, I'm leaving, goodbye. Well, it's official. I don't have a little boy anymore. <laughs> One step closer and you're going in the fireplace. <laughs> there he goes, skating around with his little skates on. <laughs> he can do it. He's a good... Oh, oh. <laughs> he fell off. He can't get up. How can he get up? He's a puppet. Up you go. Come on. <laughs> You're still here? I, I told you you could go. Well, I figured as long as we paid for them, they could entertain Tina. Which they're not. <laughs> oh, and who are you, Sammy Davis Jr.? Could you guys give us a minute? Can the guy who's pulling my strings have a beer? Sure. <laughs> I was expecting Brian home by now. He's supposed to meet with that recruiter from Stanford at 6. He didn't mention it. I bet he's not even planning on going. 
I don't like this. He's obsessed with that club. And it's going to ruin his future. I'm going down there and make sure he goes to that interview. You're right, Judy. This is serious stuff. I'll just go settle up with the puppets. Listen, guys, it was fun, but... <laughs> see this. They're playing soccer with a lemon. <laughs> oh, he scored! Goal! <laughs> and from the mountains, I do hear echo, echo, echo. Echo. <laughs> That's it. That was Ethan Johnson reading his poem, Echo. Our next participant is Lauren Miller reading her poem, Searching for Morning. Searching for Morning by Lauren Miller. Hi. Miss Stronger, it's me. Linda Michaels, class of 82. <laughs> National Merit Scholar. Valedictorian. I'm sorry, I've had a lot of students since then. Judy Michael's sister. All oh, right. How is Judy? Truthfully, not aging well. Anyway, uh, I'm just here to see my niece, Lauren. Oh, Lauren, yes. She's quite the poetess. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, she is. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, does her A poem happen to remind you of a certain C minus poem that I wrote? Not that I recall. Mm. Well, why don't you listen to it? See if it sounds familiar. Searching my soul, unable to find good, I went into the kitchen and I made myself some food. No, 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 no. That's, that's not my poem. Good Lord, what did you do to my poem? You changed the ending. What are you doing here? It is supposed to end. Threw myself into the river, died to a block of wood. I didn't want to go out on a downer. <laughs> it's a poem about suicide. It is? I thought it was about wood. <laughs> I've just completely mangled my work. It's ruined. I'm emotionally divorcing myself from the piece. I'm done. And the winner is Lauren Miller. I did not prepare a speech. I have so many people to thank. I don't see him around. Oh, my God. What? Brian didn't tell me they have a build-your-own-burrito night. It's lies on top of lies. Excuse me. Hi. We're looking for a Brian Miller. He's 18, brown hair. Oh, he's in the fantasy room. And I wish you'd get him out of here. I don't like what he's doing with those girls. Did you hear that, Bill? He doesn't like what he's doing with the girls. And he's a sleaze bag. Hey, sleaze bag with feelings. Sorry. Judy, brace yourself. This is one of those things no mother should ever have to see. I've never been more turned on in my life. Now, who can point out the prepositional phrase in that sentence? Yes, Brandy. Brian Miller, what the hell is going on in here? Really, what the hell is going on in here? Mom, what is all this? Well, I'm tutoring the dancers. Uh, I needed money to pay for my car insurance, and when I was here with Dad, I found out that the girls needed some help getting ready for their GEDs. So, sadly, it is what it looks like. Hey, Brian, ain't you gonna introduce us to your parents? Excuse me, Brandy. Oh, sorry. Aren't you going to introduce us to your parents? Very good. And no. Mrs. Miller, I just wanted to say that thanks to your wonderful son, I'm on my way to becoming a real nurse. Oh, that's very nice of you to say, nurse. Jugs. Okay, girls, I, uh, I think we're done for the day. Oh, wait, Brian, you forgot to give us our homework. Oh, right, uh, read chapter five. Dang. Oh. Thanks a lot, Cinnamon. I can't believe you two came down here. Well, we didn't want you to miss your interview with Stanford. Yeah, that was changed next week. If you're gonna butt in my life, you should at least get the facts straight. So this is why you quit your tutoring job at school? Well, the ladies pay me more than the English department, plus they, they give it to me under the table. <laughs> they pay him cash. Oh, oh God. Well, why didn't you just tell us? Well, I tried, but then he started yelling at me like I was still a kid. You're right. 
We should have trusted you. But you've got to understand, we want you to grow up. But then when you do, we worry whether you're going to make good choices. Did you go get a burrito? Happy hour ends at six. <laughs> okay. I hope this proves that I can make my own decisions. Brian, I never thought I would say this in a strip club. But I'm very proud of what I saw you doing here today. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Oh, God, I, I forgot to proofread Brandy's letter to her probation officer. I'm, uh, I'm helping her regain custody of her kid. <laughs> did a good job with that one. Yeah, we did. <sighs> well, here we are in the fantasy room. <laughs> Shame to let it go to waste. What, what do you mean? You got 20 bucks? Sure. I'm a shirt. Arms up. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice. You. <laughs> no way those are real. Who cares? <laughs> if the waitress comes back, get me another beer. I'm going to go hit the cash machine. <laughs> okay, sister, shake it. Wait a minute, that is my sister! 